Okay, welcome to another video. Let's take a look at a, a concept I think will be heavily in the news in 2023 and beyond, and that is the idea of cyclical unemployment. So what do we mean by the term cyclical unemployment? Well, it's basically a type of unemployment, a cause of people losing their jobs, which is involuntary. People don't choose for this to happen, but it's linked to a lack of demand for goods and services. It's also known as Keynesian unemployment or demand deficient unemployment. So how can we show cyclical unemployment using an aggregate demand, aggregate supply analysis diagram? Well, cyclical unemployment is due to an economy going into a recession or slowdown where there's a fall in aggregate demand for goods and services. And uh, if we have a recession, which is worse than the slowdown, many businesses will look to control their costs. They have to limit their costs by cutting their workforce. This is called labour shedding or downsizing. Uh, and in a recession, GDP contracts, and this leads to a fall in employment and an increase in spare productive capacity. Firms then reduce the size of their employment to employ their payroll, and cyclical unemployment tends to go up. So how to show this? Well, we'd be showing a fall, wouldn't we, in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, which brings down the real level of output from Y1 to Y2, and could also cause some disinflationary or deflationary pressure on prices. Uh, this could take the economy further away from its potential output. I'm using here a neoclassical diagram. So the fall in AD takes output to Y2, which is well below productive potential, meaning that there's a negative output gap. So cyclical unemployment, you can model quite simply and quite nicely using an ADAS diagram. Is cyclical unemployment likely to go up in the UK in 2023? Well, I think the answer is yes. Uh, we think that UK economy may already be in recession as we reach the end of 2022. And the forecast is that there could be quite a prolonged, albeit perhaps a shallow recession that might last up to two years. Uh, the Bank of England is forecasting that real GDP will drop by 2% in 2023, a contraction in the size of the economy. In large part, this is being caused by a steep fall in real incomes. You see prices are rising faster than wages. And once we take that inflation into account, real income is expected to fall by 7% in the next few years. Inflation, of course, there are so too higher taxes eating into disposable incomes. So real consumer spending on goods and services will fall. That will bring down aggregate demand. Many firms will limit how many new jobs they create. In 2023, and many businesses will have to make redundancies to control their costs. And there'll also be a rise in business failures, perhaps small businesses unable to cope with the significant rise in energy prices, for example. Now, there's various forecasts out there, but most forecasts think that unemployment will go up, cyclical unemployment will rise, unemployment could, it's currently 3.7%, it could get as high as 5, 5.5% by 2024. And that would be an increase of well over half a million people registered as unemployed. We get a feel for this by looking at the little turning point. Can you see on the right hand side here? This is the number of unfilled job vacancies in the UK. And that fall, albeit from a very high level, 1.3 million, is a sign perhaps of a weakening labour market as cyclical employment falls and cyclical unemployment goes up. And we're just starting to see, again, if you look on the right hand side, just starting to see an increase in the number of people who've been out of work for up to six months. Follow the blue line there has, has obviously fallen consistently, particularly since the pandemic um, impact. But you can see here the blue line starting to go up, suggesting that people are uh, unemployment just starting to rise, people losing their jobs, firms cutting back. And the number of people who've been out of work for up to uh, 26 weeks is now starting to increase. It will take some time for the green and the orange lines, that's longer term unemployment, to, uh, to start moving upwards as well. So cyclical unemployment, likely to be a key concept that you'll be studying and writing about, analysing and evaluating in your economics in 2023. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. See you sometime soon.